question 15, we're given a graph over here, and we have to decide, is it tangent or cotangent? And I have the tangent and the cotangent graph here. And then we have to decide the vertical stretch and the horizontal stretch. So first of all, is it tangent or cotangent? Well, the cotangent graph is decreasing. So the tangent graph is increasing. So it's not the tangent graph. It's definitely the cotangent graph. So let's go ahead and get rid of this tangent graph here. Delete. There we go. And let's delete that right there too. All right, so now we just have the cotangent here. Okay. So get rid of tangent so we're just left with cotangent here and we have a couple choices uh, we're going to figure out let's get the there's first of all there's a horizontal there's a vertical stretch of a and a horizontal stretch of little a all right it's actually a stretch of one over a so there's a couple ways. Let's get the little a first. So these two points right here, there's no shifting happening, horizontal or vertical. It's all stretches. There's no shifting. Uh, now on this cotangent graph, you have to be careful. This vertical asymptote is also the y-axis. This vertical asymptote is at it's a little hard to read. It's at pi. So the period that is graphed in blue, if I just draw a little blue over it, is this period right here. That's the period that's in the graph to the right. And what is the actual period? So if I did my vertical asymptotes, there's one here at the x equals 0 and another one at x equals 2. So the period will be the distance between these two, which is pretty clearly two. Could have measured that going from here to here from a matching point. The period is two there. So a couple different ways to measure the period. All right, and we have that P is the regular period over A. Now for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant, you would have a 2 pi over a, but for tangent and cotangent, you just have 1 pi over a. So our period is 2 equals pi over a. We want to solve for a. 2a equals pi, and a equals pi over 2. Okay, so we just figured out a, little a. Now we're going to get big A. Okay, so how do we get that? That one's a little bit more tricky, especially on this graph. The way we're gonna do it, these are the other, so we definitely got that point right there. That's the one I drew in, the original ones I drew in purple. We're gonna use these other nice points right here. They're happening at y coordinates one and negative one, normally. And they're halfway between this x value and the horizontal or the vertical asymptote x value. They're halfway points. Now on our graphs, it's a little bit tricky because here's our midpoint and there's the vertical asymptote. What's halfway in between is 1.5, and halfway in between 1 and 0 is 0 0.5. That's a little bit tricky because I have to figure out which which of these points has an x coordinate of one half. It's a little hard to see, especially because I've marked all over this thing already. I clear some more of this out. You can zoom in onto your graph, and it might make it a little bit easier. Huh? I would say it looks like it should be three. Definitely not four, it might even be a little higher than three, but I'm gonna go with three as mine. So that means the vertical stretch, and that point normally would be at a y coordinate of one, now it's up at three, 
And you can do the same thing on the 1.5 x-coordinate. What point on this graph has a 1.5 x-coordinate? Just tracing that 1.5 downward. We want to know where it hits the graph. I would say it hits at negative 3. It might be negative 3.5. Your graph hopefully was a little bit easier to see. We could take a guess. So it's either stretched by 3 or 3.5. Three So if it's 3, my answer will be big A is 3, cotangent of little a is somewhere here, pi over 2, x. So that'll be my answer.